street cop. So I, I end up almost passing out, and I say, you know, if you know, if you pass out, you die. That's that's my mentality. I've I'm heard not that pass, a lot. Right. If I pass, so again, that famous word, breathe, man, just breathe. And I say to myself, all right, Hogue, just just take a breath, just take a breath. <sighs> Come on, you can do it again. Take another breath. I take a second breath and then a third breath, and suddenly I got my eyesight back. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yeah. And the first thing I do is I want to see what's going on, and my finger's gone. It's gone. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm just like, all right, man. All right, just. You're going to make it. Just sit up, man. Just sit up. You can sit up. You know, the car's dead stop now. I'm not quite sure where I'm at. But as I sit up, I literally sit back in my police car, and I sit back, and I sit back. My eyes are open, and I look down, and I'm like, did they hear me? Did they hear me? And the next thing you know, I look right through the windshield, and here comes the police. And as they come through, as as they come down, I look up and I'm like, all right, I still don't know where the boogeyman is. You know, I'm not sure where I'm at, like, but I got to get out of here. So I I thought that I, I know I opened a door on my own, the driver's side door. But I thought I got out and ran to the police car. But it turns out that in that police car was Dennis Darty, you know, another good Irish dude that I went to the police academy with, you know, great guy, you know, really good dude. He said that I opened up the door on my own and then I literally passed out and fell out into his arms. Wow. And uh, he dragged me and he puts me in the back seat of the police car. Just goes. And, uh, well, mm. there's fucking blood everywhere. Blood's everywhere. I'm bleeding out. There's no doubt, you know. And uh, Dennis asked permission to take me to the hospital. And I heard him ask permission. And I say, Dennis, I'm going to die. Don't let me die out here in the street. And he says, the the dispatch said, no, no, stay there. There's going to be help there in a minute. And I heard that. And I went, no, Dennis, Dennis, I'm dying. Just get my ass to the hospital. And the next thing you know, he says on the radio, I'm taking him. And uh, he takes me to University Hospital. And uh, Do you remember any of the ride? I, I was giving Dennis directions. Oh, shit. Only because if I'm talking, mm. I'm alive. Mm-hmm. You know? Thank God he didn't listen to me because I was giving him directions to Matter Squad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> he gets me there, and then I see the big sign, ambulance entrance only. And uh, that's when I died. It was done. I was over with. And some of the greatest doctors in the world, you know? Um, it's just weird because, you know, God works in mysterious. And I'm not religious, but mm. there happened to be that head neurosurgeon of university hospital the head guy the brain dude of all brain dudes happens to be walking through the emergency room when they carted my fat ass in mm-hmm. um, there happened to be a doctor from detroit with f- four or five interns about spinal cord damage wow. happened to be in the emergency room as they carted my ass by um they decided to work on me you know they secure you know they put me all together as far as you know they got me all Stable. Stable and everything. Thanks for the word. They got me all stable and everything. And I had, uh, you know, they put me in an MRI machine and, you know, I was strapped down. And by then, you know, my wife, Roseanne, was was there. My wife-to-be, my mother was there. What I didn't know, there was like 70 cops in the room, you know, because they, you know, they had told my family that I was going to die. And if I didn't die, it would probably be different, you know, Um, paralyzed and all of those things. And it turns out that, uh, you know, I come out of the MRI machine um, in bad shape, but for the first time I had heard words and I heard the nurse say, Oh my God, it's in his cranium. I heard those, you know, it's the first words I heard. And I go, what the fuck was that? Cause her, it was a high pitched female voice and it was like chilling, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I leap out. What the fuck was that? And I come out of the MRI machine and, uh, my mom and, and my wife to be were there. And in that same room were like 60 cops, you know, New York City cops, some, you know, fed guys, but a lot of all of my closest buddies, you know, a lot of, a lot of really good people. And, uh, and I, I said, what was that? And that's the first time I had talked and they, they were like, everybody's crying. Everybody's crying. Mm. And I apologized to my wife. I said, I'm sorry. And my mother and, and the next thing you know, this head pops over this third head who I've never re- seen in my life. He had this cornball voice. Dennis, you know, like, hey, look, listen, my name is Dr. Charles David Hunt, and I'm the head neurosurgeon here at University Hospital. He says, now that we got you stable and all, he says, I have to ask you a question. And I'm looking at him, and I'm staring at him. Again, I can't, I'm strapped down. Mm-hmm. I just see his face. His mm-hmm. face is right here in front of me. And he goes, listen, now that we got you stable, 
Um, we could keep you stable for a few days and go in and get the bullets in a few days, or we can go in right now, but I need your permission. So I said, and I looked Dr. Charles David Hunt dead in the eye, Dennis, and I said, Den- uh, Doc, I started my Monday with no lead in my fucking head. I'm going to finish my Monday with no lead in my head. And seven and a half hours later, reattached, bullets are all out, spine, everything. Wow. And uh, if Dr. Charles David Hunt was in this room right now, I'd stick my tongue down his throat and tickle his fucking tonsils. <laughs> I love <laughs> yeah. that fucking guy. Is he still alive? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. He saved your life. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and the, the doctor, <clears throat> spine doctor went in, took it all out. There was another doctor. I can't remember his name. Di Benedetto or something like that. My finger wasn't all the way off. It was hanging behind these three. Mm-hmm. And uh, they reattached it, and it stayed like this. I couldn't move it, you know, and it took two more surgeries to get it to do this, and it works really well. Yeah, yeah, so, there you go. You know, yeah, yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm blessed, Dennis. Oh, I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm blessed. Uh, the doctor said, uh, "I have a hundred people shot like me, and with the amount of blood that I lost, a hundred people would die." You know, but what those guys didn't know is I had Tony Graff of my superhero. Oh yeah, right teach, by your side. Teach me how to live. Teach me how to live. Yeah, yeah, and that's awesome. that's the key. That's you know, you got to have that mindset. You know, you know, you hear it, never give up, never give up. But, you know, that's just a phrase, you know, having a plan and mentally have that plan in your heart every day, you know, is what, you know, is the key. It's the key. I'm in the hospital for 31 days. And this is what I want to get across to your listeners. When you're in the hospital, when you go to visit your brother, that's, you know, hurt, however it's done, whether it's car accident, God forbid, or shootings or whatever the case may be. Just be careful when you go to see that brother officer in the hospital, because this is where certain things fucked me up. You know, they tacked, they, you know, they put me all back together, and and I was doing fine at the hospital. And they had to teach me how to walk a little bit, you know, and teach me how to go upstairs and things. And that all got done within a week. I was I was back to my normal self, what I thought was normal. I had a headache and all for twenty two months, hmm. twenty four hours a day for twenty two oh, months. Oh Jesus Christ! But when you when when you visit your brother or sister officer in a hospital, knowing how bad I was and all, and cops were coming into the room, including bosses, you know those type. They would come into the room, and some guys were saying to me, uh, "Man, you're you're so lucky." I had guys say, "You're so lucky. You're gonna go out on you know two thirds, two thirds, two thirds." And when when yeah, when when, when your brother officers are saying that, it set a seed in my head. And then you had the captains, lieutenants, deputy chief, chief come in and and say, uh, you know, the one guy came in and said, you know, now that you're damaged goods, you're out. You're out. Joking around? No. Or? No. Because, wow. you know, listen, I was, you know, you know, when you're a worker, a worker bee, and the queen bee comes in and don't want you to work. And, you, you know, they, you know they, they try to get me fired many, many times in my police career, you know, for this, that, or the other reason. And well, maybe, scumbag. Right, right. You know, because I was a worker. I was, you know, they, you know, when, you know, when we work, yeah, yeah, everybody's got to work. The, I know. The, the detective bureau's got to work. Evidence got to work. Courthouse got to work. Everybody's got to work. Yep. You know, and when you're used to guys just doing nothing and nothing's going on in the shift and all of a sudden you got somebody coming in every day, you know, back in 19, you know, a long time yeah, yeah, ago yeah. and nobody ever worked. He said 19 just so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so when they tell you you're damaged goods and you're 43 days away from getting married and, you know, I got a home in Bassing Ridge, I got a mortgage, I got- Yeah, you know, got a lot of things for you. Got, right, you know. And the next thing you know, I'm mentally fucked up. I'm going to tell you, Dennis, I was mentally fucked up. Mm. Nobody's helping you, no therapy. And- yeah, you know, because, you know, those days, again, I'm kind of aging my- Yeah, it's like, okay, get back to work, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I just killed two people. Yeah, well, just get over and get back to work, you know? Oh, I almost died. Yeah, that's okay, get back to work, you know? But they did the worst thing for me because I'm all cop all the time. That's all I know. Yeah, it's all, yeah, it's your life. That's it, that's it. And the next thing you know, they're telling me I'm damaged goods, and Dennis, it, it sent me down a bad path. It sent me down a very bad path. You know, I, you know, I walked my wife down the aisle, on the 43rd day, mm. you know, I look like Frankenstein, but my wife said I looked like Frankenstein long before I got shot. But <laughs> turns out that, uh, you know, I can't work, but she's going off to work every day and watching her go off and me staying home was just horrible, just yeah. a horrible mental, you know, and hearing that voice, you're damaged good. You're never going to be a cop again. You're damaged good. You know, um, you know, suicide is a, is a big thing amongst us in law enforcement. You know, we think that's the answer. You know, and that's definitely not the answer. No, I know. That's definitely not the answer. But anyway, 
you know, my, my gun went from my closet to my nightstand to the desk, uh, the, the table right next to my chair. And, uh, you know, it came very, very close. Yeah. And I'll tell this, and I'm telling all your listeners, everyone that's listening to me right now, as great of a cop I know I am, as great as a cop I, I am, uh, I was as a patrol guy and a sergeant, the greatest thing, I've locked up murderers, kilos, guns, all of those things, did it all, greatest stuff ever. Dennis, the greatest thing I ever did was pick up the phone and ask for help. Mm. Who'd you call? I'd rather not okay, say, you know, but it was a psychiatrist. I, I actually, I, I was, it was done. It was going to get done. And there was the yellow pages were on the counter. So now you know how old I really am. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's just for those listeners that don't know what the yellow pages are. It's today's Google, but on paper. <laughs> yeah. So we were still delivering those a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just went to the letter P and I called a psychiatrist and, uh, you hit the good one, the first one. Yeah. The very first one. And, uh, what made you make that decision? You know, I don't know. Hmm. I don't, I honestly, you know, your brain can convince you to Dude, kill the yourself. It's a crazy fucking thing. The brain, I mean, it, like you, you know, we talked earlier about things. Um, your, your brain will either be the quickest, fastest working thing or the slowest thing, you know, and it, it, your brain, it, my brain convinced me that the, it, this will make the pain go away. Let me just pick up the gun and make the pain go away. Um, and the pain wasn't just the headache, it was the, the fear of not being able to be that person that I want to be, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to be that husband. I want to be that cop. I want to be that father. But if I can't, then what good am I? And and it will convince you to make it all go away, you know? And I'll say this again. The greatest thing I've ever done in law enforcement was to pick up that phone and ask for help. Mm -hmm. And I seek help, got help. And I'm stronger right now than I've ever been in my life. I'm as, cocky and as confident as I've ever been in my life. And that's that's if if you don't get anything out of this podcast conversation, understand that picking up the phone and asking for help is what you need to do. Mm. And uh and I did and I was out for two years. I By got the way, f- if they don't want to pick up the phone, the psychology today is a right. great resource. You can just Google find a psychologist right. or a psychiatrist or mental help. Yeah. Listen, they got, you know, again, I don't want to promote it, but we we got the greatest insurances in the world. You can call anybody you want. Yeah. You can call, you, it's going to pay for it. Yeah. You know? I mean, I was about to say cop to cop and so many other, you know, organizations. We're working that, on something here. Did you know that? I, I didn't know that, but and then, yeah. and so. It's in the work. In right. the early stage, we're working on an outpatient program. Good, here. good. Yeah. Um, that's what I mean. It's us sticking together again. You know, we can't, we can't leave it up to the politicians or the leaders. You know, it's, it's, it's the, the your peers and the people around you. That has to get the message across, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did. I did. Uh, I was out for about two years, and I went back to the Irving Police Department and did twelve more. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and uh, what was it like when you returned? Um, it was, you know, a little weird. Everybody, you know, that was another thing during my my uh, absence. There was a couple of guys during those two years. Like I tried to go back in my twentieth month or so, and I had guys say to me, "You're fucking crazy. You should be shot in the head again." I swear to God, I swear to God. The one lieutenant said to me, you should be shot in the head again for coming back here. I went after him. And the only reason why I didn't kill that motherfucker was because another cop who I'll leave, uh, um, he he literally picked me up. Literally, picked, He was a very large, very strong, beautiful human being. Picked me up, literally carried me out, brought me outside. And said, I said, when, please put me down. I'm going back in now. I didn't have my gun or anything. I was going to fucking choke him the fuck out. But, uh. You know, I, I went back to work and, 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 and did 12 more. I did a total of 27 years with the Urban and Police Department. Uh, what was it like to go back? It was a little, I was a little apprehensive. Mm-hmm. Um, they put me, they did the right thing at first. They put me in a training bureau, you know, which was great. I enjoyed it. You know, became a firearms instructor and all. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it just, you know. Did you get promoted in the, uh, yes, the I did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, did. I left that part out. They, they, uh, you know, during my, just before I got married, you're like, oh, we better promote this guy, you know. And they promoted me and a few other sergeants at the time. That's great. Yeah. Did they do a ceremony like that at the yeah. hospital for you or anything like no, that? No, no. They they actually, after I came back from my honeymoon, they did it, you know. It's right? nice. Yeah. It was Somebody nice. had a fucking thought to yeah. do something decent for yeah, you, right? Yeah, yep, yep. I could say the mayor at that point was a, a friend of mine, so he did it. Um, uh, he was supposed to promote me before I got shot, but that's a whole other story, <clears> too. <throat> so, yeah, it all worked out. It all, You know, like, I when I finished up. When I when I when I went back and did twenty seven years, like I just I just was so happy to be um, making that decision to say okay, you know those twelve years I went back. Like I said, I went to the training bureau for a while. It wasn't good enough for me. I needed the adrenaline rush. 
I went back. Uh, so what was it like when you said, hey, I'm coming out of training, I want to go back to the road? Um, there was a few people going, holy shit, here we go, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I could say, and again, I could say this, I uh, I locked up a lot of people mm. in those 12 years. I locked up a lot. And I truly, truly bad guys. A lot of, matter of fact, uh, uh, the state police came in during those times. I remember. You know? Yeah, and you know, they really couldn't do much. They were under the consent degree stuff. and But they was just good to see him because there were certain cops that weren't backing you up at the time. And uh, the troopers those guys wanted, to, yeah, they, yeah, wanted they, 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 they were eager. Yeah, they wanted yeah, to do things. Yeah, yeah. And they were there was a lot of awesome troopers. It's a lot. Listen, a lot of Irving, great Irvington guys too. But uh, I just remember uh, I announced my retirement, you know, and uh, about two months before I announced my retirement, I was off duty on my way home uh, from work. I was working till two in the morning, and uh, the radio was on in my car in my truck, and I hear somebody say, "This, you know, arm robbery going down." That's, and I happened to be right dead at the red light. There's a phone booth right there. Now I'm aging myself. There's mm-hmm. a phone booth. And uh, I look up and short and shit, there he is, gun, two people, you know. And he gets back in the car. I get on the rear. I said, I'm following the car. I'm in my pickup truck. And the next thing you know, a um, little bit of a chase. He crashes. You were following him? You knew you were following him? Yeah. He, he figured I was following him because there was no cars. It was late at night. Yeah, 2 o'clock. In the right. Morning. So he takes off. And make a long story short, he crashes. He gets out. He's got a gun in each hand. He's got a gun in his waistband. And I'm going, you know, send me some help. Send me some help. I said, he's got two guns. He's got a gun in each hand. And uh, he takes off running. I'm chasing him. Holy shit. I, ca- I catch him. I catch him. Uh, three guns, two in his hands, one in his waistband. And part of the reason why he got caught up on a fence and he had to let go of the guns. Mm. So the guns go down. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. He got caught. Gotcha. Gotcha. Don't yeah. worry. And that was that was a couple of months before I retired. That was the turning point. You said, "All right." Yeah, I started to say, "You know what? This is all good." But you know, I got twenty seven in. I got the goose that laid the golden egg. You know, like, come on now, got kids. So now it's time for me to go. It's my last day, and the bosses are all saying to me, "All right, Hulk, you know, it's your last day. Just you know, you clean out your." I said, "No, no, I got I got a twelve hour shift. I got to do. I'm doing it." And they're like, "Fucking Hulk, come on, man." I said, "No, I'm done. At twelve, twelve more hours, I'm done." I go to work. It's daytime and. uh Troopers are all over the place. And uh, it's 3.30 in the afternoon, and I'm driving past the projects where I grew up, and I hear pow, pow, pow. You know, it's my very last day. Holy shit. I'm literally three hours away from oh, the, you man. know. And uh, no sooner do I hear it, it's 3 in the afternoon, right by the projects where I grew up. Like, how weird is that? The dispatch says, we got shots fired, shots fired, you know, Crescent Lane, Union Avenue, and short and shit, who comes running right out? Gun in hand, there he is. He looks right at me. He knows me and I know him. He goes right past me. I go headquarters. I got him. He's running towards the Irvington Motor Lodge. I says, he ran into the Irvington Motor Lodge, sent me help, foot chase, go down a long alleyway. There's a back door. There's another building behind it. Goes through the door. Goes through that door. I see which room he goes into. I stand outside the door. I said, I'm back building, room 112. Get me help. Troopers everywhere. I don't know where they came from, but they're everywhere. <clears throat> Manager comes up, hands me the key, open the door. You know that entry? He's cowering down on the floor, screaming, Hogan, Hogan, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. I don't see a gun. I know he had one in his hand when he entered the room. As he's going, Hogan, Hogan, don't shoot me. The trooper's going, yeah, you're an asshole. Hogan's retired. <laughs> I said, no, no. I said, I'm Hogan. He goes, no, he retired. I said, no. I go in about three hours. I'm out. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's that was my last day. Yeah, that's crazy. My last fucking day. You knew yeah. the kid from the from the neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. yeah he knew me. I Where knew was him. the gun? The gun was under. The, he pushed the dresser up. You know how I got those like hidden, not hidden, but the little... Yeah, the four inches. He just pushed it up, pushed it under there, put it back down. It was right there. There's a 38, two rounds were missing out of it. Did he tell you where the gun was? No, it's just one of those, like, we looked around the room real quick, and all I did was push the dresser, and there it was. He was that's where he was closest to the dresser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My next thing was going to pull the dresser out. Who was he shooting at? One of one of his gangbangers. One of his gangbangers. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So just to tell you how much of a cop I was, all right, then we'll go on, because I know you got to get out of here. I'm the only guy in the Irvington Police Department's history that had a Police 24 hours a day, seven days a week for four months sitting outside my house. It's cool. Because, you know, the gang, they like, you know, the bloods were going to fucking tear me up. They were tearing my family up Why? and everything. You know, I, I I put a lot of damage on their gun stuff. You know, yeah, I got, yeah, I got, yeah. You know, a lot. You know, me and a couple of the boys, not just me, but, but because of my name, you know, they, they can remember Hogan. It was an yeah. easy name to remember. Sure. But it was funny because in Basking Ridge, they were like, oh, you couldn't tell my neighbors why. Did you have any them. credible threat they ever show Oh, up? yeah. No, I got a video. They, they, they were a debriefing guy in prison. And, you know, the last thing that the corrections people said is, like, there anything else you want to add? And this was down in South Jersey. He said, yeah. He goes, listen, he goes, 
Now, I think he's a North cop, but there's a guy, Hogan, that does a, there's a, uh, this is how it all started. There's a guy, Hogan, up in North Jersey. I think he's a North cop. They, they got a, uh, hit out on him. They're going to kill him. And that's how it all started. You know, it, I mean, literally on video, you know, phone calls were made. Boom. I mean, you know, for six months, I, you know, then it actually, they were around my house for two years, but you know, it's kind of hard to keep a police car. Then all my neighbors are like, isn't it nice? They're going to slow the speeders down in the neighborhood because they're you know, not allowed to say they're going to kill this guy. You so know, who's sitting out there? That's I, I, but, no, Basking Ridge. Yeah. They tried to do Irvington. Irvington didn't have enough manpower, but the Basking Ridge police burned the township and the next town over Long Hill Township. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They covered it. It was, you know, part of their, you know, the detail. Yeah. Did you keep an M4 by the door or an AR-15? I, that was a gun by every door. There's guns yeah. around everywhere, you know. Yeah. Got to keep the house dangerous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, again, that's, you know, that's that's who I am and that's 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 my story. And, uh, listen, I, I appreciate it. So now to answer your question, what happened to the guy? Mm -hmm. um, the two guys on the porch that sold him the drugs, he tried running back to that house. And those two guys, oh, no, you ain't coming in here. You fucking killed Hogan. You ain't definitely, you definitely ain't coming in here. And he bought three vials of crack cocaine um, off of those guys. He uh, jumped over a, a, a wall, a retaining wall, to a vacant lot. Um, and he put the gun to his head and blew his brains oh, out. Oh, shit. Yeah, he killed himself thinking he killed me. Na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who was he? Um, even if not, you don't have to have knowledge. No, I know. No, I mean, listen, uh, the bottom line is I, I thought, you know, I wanted to know who he was. I kind of figured I would know who he was because everybody knows me. He didn't know me and I didn't know him. He actually had a plan. He, he, uh, the judge told him he was going to go to prison. So bring a toothbrush because he got caught with a gun six, eight months earlier. So he had spoke to his girlfriend about committing suicide. Oh, uh, he managed to, um, he said what he want, what he told his girlfriend in length that he wanted to get a gun. He wanted to get high on cocaine. Get a gun and shoot himself, and he wanted to do it in a vacant building. So was he looking for one? You found him. Well, he actually, believe it or not, it was a East Orange, New Jersey cop's gun. Somebody that I knew very well was his gun. Again, how weird is that? Mm. So yeah, so he he managed to to get the gun, and then uh, he robbed the guy on the way to uh, the crack house. And uh, between robbing the guy and getting to the crack house, here comes Kenny Hogan, the cop, and the two guys on the porch said to him, "Listen, that was Hogan in that police car. He's going to come back." You know, he he didn't say one word to those two guys. He just paid the 30 bucks, came off the porch, ran to that corner, down to the corner real quick. Um, those two guys thought I was dead. I knew them both. They came to the hospital to visit me. Oh, no shit. Yeah. And I locked them both up several times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Listen, man, the people I locked up that. <clears throat> yeah. I remember going out when I first met my wife. We went somewhere and uh, went to into this establishment. And uh, so we're walking in. And the guy goes, yo, that's the fucking guy that locked me up. Mm. I'll never forget her looking at me like, what the fuck? Right. And she went, that's the cool. I'm buying that motherfucker is shot. That's right. the coolest fucking dude. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's you know, what that's it's just, all about. That's, uh, you know, it's a, it was a respect thing. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that, um, I don't know. I, who, who knows how I ended up coming and figuring a lot of stuff out. And, you know, now we're passing that wisdom on to the newer generation of right. You can be this person and also be that person at the same time. Absolutely. Don't think it's got to be one or the other. You sure. can be like that. I have one last question for you. Um, tell me about the support of the public while you were out injured in the hospital. To this day, I still have six six or eight boxes of cards. And you were in Irvington. Let's, let's paint yeah. it. But Irvington, if you don't know Irvington, New Jersey, it's tough. It's tough. It's a rough area, listen, boys and listen, girls. Listen, it's, it's, it's uh, mostly African-American. Um, I'll say this again. Some of the most beautiful people oh, I can to, this, that, yeah. to this day. Um, like I said, the bad guys came to the hospital, the schools wrote letters, cards. I got teddy bears and, you know, please don't die. I mean, some of the things that were said, people come to Kids total so strangers, right, yeah. sending me cards, uh, you know, with beautiful letters in them. Just, I mean, just, I, I got goosebumps just talking about it that's now. Awesome. It's listen. And, and again, that's, that's what society is. It isn't what everybody's saying it is. There's so many beautiful people that help us, support us. You know, maybe they lay back a little bit. They don't want to show it. But society like is, is still good. It's still beautiful. And, and I would never change one thought about how people feel about us. Uh, as long as you're a good person and a good cop, you know, good things will happen to you. If you train hard, you understand what you need to do to go home every day. You know, you hear that phrase, you know, your job is to go home. Well, before you go home, you got to get there. Mm -hmm. And that's where the mindset comes in. You got to start it somewhere. And, uh, and, and, and that's what I, I, I want every one of your listeners to understand that, uh, society is great. People are great. Don't fall into the, you know, the falsehoods of what they're thinking and saying, cause it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's totally not true. 
You know, I still have people that know who I am. You know, I mean, listen, I got a great job. I, st- I still, I'm still in law enforcement. I work for the Union County Prosecutor's Office. I can't believe I'm saying this for a long time. I won't say how many years because you'll put 27 in my number together, but it's been a very long time too. Um, and I work with the, with a lot of cops every single day and a lot of people, a lot of victims. And, uh, they still need us because oh, yeah. everybody needs the police. That's everybody. Right. That's a good thing. Yeah. I'm actually writing that down. I'm stealing it too, by the way. That's all right. Put Listen, it on a fucking sticker. That's all right. You can put it there. Just remember where you got it from. I'll send you uh, 10 cents for every sticker that we sell. <laughs> I have known about you for many, many years. I mean, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. No, I, I've, I've never gotten to meet you. I've heard wonderful things about you. Thank you. I'm actually, uh, there's sometimes I do these podcasts and I feel like I get more out of it personally than most people do this was a blessing for me thank you and um i feel pumped that now when i see you're gonna know who i am right and so we have to say hello and shoot the shit and stuff absolutely Absolutely. and it's just uh another one of those chapters that to me i it's just a it's a blessing and i can't thank you enough for coming here and doing this i appreciate it i appreciate it very much you guys keep it up thank you thank you very much you're the man listen keep it up keep it up and uh if there's anything i can do for you or your company stuff to do all right just you let me know no we'll let you know right after this we'll talk things all right um, listen, I, I thank you enough to all your listeners, you know, everybody needs the police, but more than anything, be kind, considerate and thoughtful, be respectful to others. And there'll be a reward for each time you're good to somebody. My reward, Tony Graffa told me, if you're good to people, there'll be a reward. You know, what my reward is my life. Oh yeah. My life. Yeah. Kidding. Yeah. So good shit. that's what I mean. So all your listeners, you know, cops or not, just you treat people with goodness and kindness. There'll be a reward. 